So um, I've just finished my uh, my presentation on this uh, this famous new generation. Um, and millennials and Generation Z are actually both very very different, and there's very little um, areas that they are in any way the same. So I'm just going to pick up on Gen Z, who is really like the new generation and who will actually have the spending power, who is at the moment taking the decision with their family on where to go on vacation. Um, but the Gen Z, I think what people don't realize is that this is the first generation that don't, doesn't know any time before technology. So, you know, in the good old times when you went to work and you had your mobile, you had to put your mobile in your locker and you weren't allowed to use it for eight hours, these guys would tell you that there was no way in the world that would work with you. And I think when you look at retention, and I think this is something that every generation always says about the young and the new, is, you know, these guys are ridiculous. They're constantly on their phone. I don't understand them. Um, they don't want to work. Actually, I hired three in my team. And I think what's the most complicated part is to keep them engaged. I mean, if you think that you look on Instagram, YouTube, I mean, the concentration span is what, 10, 15 seconds? A video, maybe 45 seconds? So we're trying to put them into our classical way of, you need to do for eight hours a day or nine hours a day or six hours a day, you need to do the same job. And if that's a, checking in somebody at front desk and sit there for all of those hours doing exactly the same thing every day, this is not how they were born. change jobs every two and a half years and that's not just going from one hotel to the other that's from being an artist to being somebody in digital marketing to being a receptionist to being whatever else and if you look from what you can learn online you can do this so if you take this into you know what's the needs of this next generation and, and generation set and I'm not a specialist by any means but when you look at what they're asking for where before millennials already started asking about everything to be vegan or vegetarian or everything to be green or being responsible. Generation Z has much stronger values than many other generations, but they have started drinking Coca-Cola and eating McDonald's again. You know, it's much more balanced. So there is not that everybody is now vegan or everybody is doing everything the same. What's really important here is that you have like the kind of true touch points and they're looking for true. How many followers do you have? Were they natural, organic or not? If they weren't organic, well, forget about it. You know, they're really looking for the experiences that fit within what they believe. And I think what we're, what we're probably not doing so well yet is, you know, when we talk about giving people different experiences, we put together a menu, we print it, and you have four choices. It's nothing to do with an experience, you know. You, it's just your choice that you just tailor, put on a piece of paper, and that's it. And I think in the industry, we're always questioning the others and never ourselves. And when you look at, if you want classical HR retention, it's not going to work. Ask the HR of a tech company how they would retain their people. I mean, why did Silicon Valley start putting these uh, billiard tables in there and, you know, the garages and the laundry and whatever? Just because they create an environment where people can really work 24 hours and concentrate. They put the benchmark up high to a massive extent and let them go and produce. What do we do? No, we box it in, we frame everything and we give no choice and nothing else. And I think this is where, if we make that change in the industry, even if it's in small ways, we'll make a massive difference.